All right, so this morning's not live. Uh, you're watching it at 10, we're doing this at 8.29, because we just got informed when we pulled in this morning that they're ripping the roof off of the complex. So in about 10 minutes, it's gonna be overly loud inside of our shop where they rip the roof off. So we're gonna film this ahead of time. We're gonna post it up at 10. We'll chat with you then. Good morning, Kevin Risto with Ronin Safety and Rescue. Welcome back to the Ronin shop. Today we are talking about a sideways A-frame. Last week we did a monopod, today we're talking about a sideways A-frame. And what's nice is that if you have access to a tear adapter or a vortex, uh, and you're used to using a tripod configuration, whether an equilateral tripod or a, a lazy leg or easel leg tripod, you can split that unit into an A-frame and a monopod. And which is sort of essentially what we're doing here. We did use a vector last week, but um, so when you take the leg away and you use it as a monopod somewhere else, your remaining A-frame, you can set it up either as a sideways A-frame like we have here today, or a bipod. And a bipod is pretty interesting because we actually can't leave that out over the edge. But today we're talking about the sideways A-frame. And what's pretty cool about the sideways A-frame, uh, what it does really well, better than some of the other configurations, certainly better than monopod. It accepts changes in the resultant force of the change of direction pulley. Um, as the, the load changes direction on the cliff face, this resultant will move back and forth. It just needs to stay within the footprint, in between the front foot and the rear foot of the sideways A-frame. So we have a lot more latitude to change our resultant and still maintain a stable artificial high directional. So what we've done to stabilize this thing, is we've set it up in an A-frame configuration, sideways meaning it is perpendicular to the edge, which gives us this, this long front to back footprint. And we've stabilized it a couple of ways. First, we've secured the feet. The front foot is, has been screwed down to the wooden floor, so it is immobile. And the rear foot, we haven't screwed it down, but it's butted up against the back wall. And remember, what you're trying to anticipate when you load up an artificial high directional is what happens to this thing in compression and what happens in tension. When we load this, when we compress it, this rear foot wants to go backwards. Because it's butted against the wall, it can't go backwards. So uh, that's the direction it wants to go, so I really don't have to do much else to the rear foot. Now, we do also need to consider what it might want to do in tension, and if we were pulling this down on the head of this tripod, we were using this as an anchor frame instead of a change of direction, uh, that rear foot might want to lift, in which case we might want to do some more work to secure the rear foot. But we're using it as a change of direction, a result that's in the legs, so we're not concerned about that lift this morning. Uh, we've also, because it's just two legs stood up, we need to make sure that it's not going to tip over side to side. Uh, so we've done a couple of things on this side. We've just gone up to one of our joists in the roof, uh, some 8 mil cord, uh, on a, wrapped around twice to a muncher hitch, so it's a muncher mule, blocked off, um, some hand tension in there. On this side, we started with this cord here, um, this black cord, tied to the head of the tripod, guide down low to one of our anchors, three to one into a clove hitch, and we're pretty happy with this guide, except that this angle is tight. Right? And we talked last week about how our guy angles want to be at least greater than 30 degrees, um, ideally more than 45. And we looked at this one and we said, this one's a little bit tight. It's a little bit too steep and it doesn't provide uh, as effective a guy as it's got a little bit more um, a, a wider angle. So we added in this other guy and this isn't to a, a great angle, but it's really just for demonstration purposes. Again, tied into the head of the tripod and for this one, we've done a classic trucker's hitch. That will be a trucker's hitch with an alpine butterfly instead of a fig inline figure eight. So, three different methods of tying off with small diameter cordage. Uh, and we've got a stable tripod, the feet are secured. Uh, unless we put force pulling on the uh, directional tripod that way, uh, it's not going to go anywhere. But in that case, we would secure the foot. Um, because we're using a change of direction, we're actually going to be pulling down, putting some compression, so we aren't concerned about a tensile force going forward. Um, if you were the other, we could secure the foot, we could put the tie from the head of the tripod uh, back in a, a back tie. Uh, and normally we would, um, just in cases of 
you know, because stuff happens, people grab the tripod or as the stretcher comes up. Uh, we just don't have an appropriate back tie anchor handy here. Uh, but anyway, let's get back to the whole reason we're doing this is to raise our main line, which has got a single rope system for demonstration purposes, off the ground, off the edge. In this case, because our change direction pulley is, it's within 30 centimeters of the edge, so we've really broken that anchor down quite a bit and reduced the friction uh, and means any edge transition is going to be a whole lot easier. So right now we've got a one person load on here and if we trace the applied force angle or the resultant angle through the center of the pulley, and that's what I'm using this cord for, uh, point out our resultant is basically landing pretty much uh, halfway between the front and rear feet of this uh, sideways A-frame today. And that is a good resultant. We're pretty happy with that. We're right in the middle and we can load that up and it's not going to go anywhere. So it's pretty solid with one person load on it. And again, so Chris, you want to start making your way up. As the resultant changes, because of the footprint of the sideways A-frame, we can accommodate changes in the resultant. Now you can, if you're looking at the pulley, it might be a little bit hard to tell, but we can actually see the pulley moving back and forth a little bit. We have Chris climbing the rope here. Um, he's just a couple feet off the ground. Uh, good there. And we can actually see small changes, but it's not too big. Now Chris, if you want to push out, as this rope is going out, the pulley changed a little bit, and now our resultant is here. Now we're about a third of the distance closer to uh, a third of the distance between the two legs, um, closer to the front foot. So we went from a resultant of half to one third front of, of the length from the front foot. So this is important that when you're setting up these high directionals, you anticipate what it is you're going to do with it, how the load's going to move, and how the resultant is going to change. The monopod we did last week, it's great when you can set it up and you're pretty confident that your, your rope angles aren't going to change, and you get your, your monopod leg in line with the resultant, but you have to anticipate it moving. We just had a small amount of movement there. Um, if Chris was to come up and actually press the edge, we would get even more uh, movement out of this resultant. Uh, in fact, almost you know, straight in line with the front foot. So you really need to figure out what the resultant angle, or picture, visualize what the resultant angle is going to be ahead of time, and also visualize what happens as the load comes up and down, as the load crests the edge. What happens if we are, if we were raising Chris, uh, he was climbing this morning, if we actually put an MA system and hold on here, we'd be, there'd be some friction in this pulley, we'd be actually pulling backwards on the pulley. Um, so all these things are going to cause different forces on the HD that you want to uh, anticipate. And I think it takes a practice. If you have an HD, you want to set it up uh, dry land or on the ground with some weights, apply some forces, do some hauling, um, play around with it, see where the result goes, see how stable it is in different configurations. Again, the goal with an A-frame or a tripod is to keep the result within the footprint of the legs. If the result goes outside the footprint of the legs, then we have to adequately back tie it to resist those forces. And that would you know, perhaps that might be a subject for another uh, live feed for us. Thank you very much.